Hello, and welcome back to the diner for this edition of Burgers and Fries. So we have Mr. Brony himself. That is you, Pat. How you doing today? I'm doing awesome. And then we have the man, the legend. It's Timberwolf, a.k.a. Greg. How's it going? Doing good. <clears throat> doing really good. All right. And then we have the aspiring artist himself. It is Mikey. What's up? Doing fine. Thank you. And now, of course, just dropping in, it's Mr. Trump Derangement Syndrome himself, Tony. So we, again, are talking about the WGA writer's strike. So, Pat, what is your issues with Hollywood today? They're out of ideas. And I feel like the... I guess I feel like the Hollywood executives are the very reason why these writers and actors are on strike and why everything that I've been looking forward to, mostly Marvel related, have been put on hold indefinitely. Now let's go on to Greg. What are your issues right now with Hollywood? Honestly, I just say just let them keep on striking. Without the woke crap that's going on in Hollywood right now, we don't have to deal with any woke shows, woke movies or anything of that matter i can understand that i mean we also remember we had the pandemic not too long ago and you had all these figureheads these actors that are telling you if you don't wear a mask i can't respect you and if you don't social distance if you don't get the vaccine jab i don't like and it's like you guys are you fuckers are able to lock yourselves down in your own mansions with big walls with your own security all right. Meanwhile, there's other people that are out of work, all right, that are suffering because of the country being shut down. And then also, let's remember that there were like Hollywood was deemed, quote unquote, essential as a business. OK, so they were allowed to do whatever they wanted in terms of, you know, still operating. Meanwhile, you had another a bunch of other businesses that had to shut down or were not allowed to operate because of, quote unquote, COVID restrictions. So I can understand there where we're thinking, you know, fuck these guys. We have no sympathy for them. Mikey, all right, you are an aspiring artist. You've been, you've said many times that you would love to be an artist. You always wanted to move to Burbank and be in the industry. So tell me a little bit about that. I always wanted to work for um, William Street or Adult Swim and give my productions like Microville or Unison to them. Okay. Then I, then at least get one season out of it. I don't care if it gets canceled like midway. I just wanted something out there. I too wanted to work for Adult Swim. Wouldn't we all? Uh, I, wanted I, to work, I wanted to work for VH1, host the VH1 Top 20 Countdown. Tony, all right. I know you have a whole plethora of issues with the Hollywood industry today, including your stance on you won't watch anything if it was made past 1999. So what are your issues with Hollywood today? Well, my issues with Hollywood is that like, they don't think of any, anything original. They just reboot, remake, remake, remake. And and a lot of the movies these days are just like, the, the actors they get cannot act for shit. It's like, they're running out of ideas. They're running out of people to find to use in the movies and stuff. And when you get them, when you when they get them with the movies, it's a big mess. Perfect how example. Do you, how do you hold on? How do you know that they can't act when you won't watch the current products? I've been to the movies. At least I've been to the movies throughout the two thousands and stuff like that. And like the, no, the, I'm, no, the twenty twenties, buddy. No, 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 not the two thousands. The twenty twenties. I saw. I saw. Oh wait, never mind. Star Wars was episode nine was in twenty. Like so, I can't say that. Never mind. Exactly. So All he's right. never seen any movies from twenty twenties. No, he hasn't. I keep urging him to, but he won't. We agree that, you know, from the downfall of Hollywood podcasts, where we're basically like, you know what? There are exceptions. There are some movies where they're like, yeah, this was awesome. This was worth seeing the movie. Like you, Pat, you're not ashamed to admit that you've seen Barbie 20 times, right? 20 what? times? I can't see a movie in theaters that many times. Yeah, Even though we be, I should be in the Guinness Book of World Records for seeing Barbie the amount of times. It's like, mm. where's my world record? Again, and people, mm. you, there are people that have seen Star Wars in the theaters multiple times. Um, I remember, so it does have a it does have a market. And again, uh, the whole Barbenheimer phenomenon has been has shown that there is still an interest to get people to go to the movies, and there is still an interest to get people to 
purchase the ticket. But it, yeah, it is the exception rather than the rule. And then, of course, as you are pointing out, that you feel like there's a lot of productions now that are just going to be on halt because of this ongoing writer's strike. So what shows are being affected? Cobra Kai. I love that show. I'm really looking forward to season six. I agree. I really Even want to it's see the how... last season. I know. I want to see how this how that ends. All right. I really hope that they still pull pull off season six despite this. All right. So he any needs other to bring show? Back Dutch. Whoever is the uh, writers for Hollywood or something, I just wish they would just uh, just put their politics at the doors and all that. Yes. Okay. Can agree with that, Mikey. Anything you want to add before I start getting into the meat of the matter? I would say um, some of these higher-ups that like kept pushing or delaying stuff should either resign or just get fired because they, they cost a lot of production value. I knew a person from LinkedIn that made like a Cartoon Network original movie. All got canceled and shelved. All that work what? for nothing. What? Because because of the was, strike? Yeah. it's okay. It had to do with the strike, the pandemic, and AI. Since he told me... AI can basically write scripts for you, and it is true since Chat GDP can basically do almost anything now. Jeez. And that is, and that is actually going to be an issues that they that the WGA writers are addressing is the use of AI in production. All right, and we may or may yeah. not agree oh, with their buddy, stances on it. A, a friend of mine, mine who I know, who I know in person, Josh, he 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 was doing filming stuff in Chicago and. Because of all this crap going on, he's been out of work ever since. Now he has, he has to find a job at like, um, I don't know, go back to Menards or something like that and everything. It's, it's, it's affecting people people locally too. And that's the thing. Like, you think it wouldn't affect people locally, it just affect people like who are not in Hollywood, but it's affecting everyone one around us. And that's another, and there is another point that we actually need to be making when we're talking about this writer's strike is that it is not just the actors and the writers and the directors. There is a whole plethora of under the line workers that are getting affected. And even if they are not necessarily part of the strike, they are being forced to strike and not be in work because of these people that are causing the strike. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Does anybody remember the 2007-2008 strike? Yep. Vaguely. Yes. So I it's, also, it's mainly because of the shows that got affected by it. All right. Um, and again, I think the main thing about that strike was that they were wanting to change in residuals when it came to home media releases. And, you know, because they recognize, hey, streaming services are the future. We need to change the way we're being compensated. And honestly, you're right. I can agree with that. All right. I don't remember what the end result was. I quite frankly don't give a fuck. But let's just I can list a fun, some shows that were definitely affected by the strike. And some you might say they got ruined by the strike, especially the show Heroes. Anybody remember that one? Oh, yeah. Oh. Heroes. Was, that show was all over the place. Who doesn't remember Heroes? I mean, that, that first like, season um, was amazing. A Marvel DC project? No, it wasn't really a Marvel DC project, but it was basically about, you know, people that are becoming superheroes. Um, but that first season, you know, you had Zachary Quinto as Skylar. I mean, it was a great show that first season. And then the second season had a shortened season due to the writing strike. And then after that, after it continued, um, arguably the fan base was a shell of what it used to be. So yeah. it was like the boys before the boys. I guess you could say that. Um, and then, I mean, and Bones got affected, Scrubs got affected, Lost got affected, The Office got affected. Oh, The Office. That was my brother's favorite show at the time. That's, you're right. So that stuff got ruined, arguably, or just it suffered to some effect due to that writer's strike. I'm going to say that this was just something that we're going to have to see what's going to happen in the future now on. Because, hey, what the fuck happens if Cobra Kai Season 6 gets canceled because of the strike? There's going to be a super ton of people that are pissed. I would be very extremely pissed. Agreed. I would lose a lot of respect for Netflix at that point. Right. And, you know, I do have a whole plethora of notes that I have written down. So we are going to go through them. 
All right. Um, now, do you think, gentlemen, that the general public has any sympathy for this strike whatsoever? My nope. my answer would be a resounding no. And why would that be? Because you know, people don't people don't don't give a shit about what's going on in the world because they're too focused on themselves, so they're not going to care. That's the thing. It's it's not it's not that it's not that um. It, it's the people who are striking's fault. It's just actually, in this case, it is the people who are striking's fault because, as we're going to get to, it's not just about them. All right. Um, so, any other reasons why, by uh, Greg, Mikey, Pat, any other reasons why you just have no sympathy for what's going on right now? Well, um, mm-hmm. for starters, well, for starters, let's say if a let's say if a movie or a show fails, guess who gets to blame for that? The audience. Yeah, you're right. They do blame the audience. Like they they've alienated the audience nowadays, and then they're wondering why nobody watches their shit anymore. Well, because you fucking alienated us. You had Captain Karen tell white men don't watch my movie, and then wondered why most of her audience wasn't watching the movie. Some places I do because <clears throat> I do feel for like I said some of the animators that lost their jobs because of this, and many of them have come to my town just so they could find jobs in like the newscast two hour driving just for this tiny little town it's, it's yeah i know where you are and i'm not going to say your location all right but it is fucking far from la all right although um, al- although i will say that the demands they are asking for these executives is a bit much so that's right. where i don't really have any sympathy i think it's all a matter of them being greedy that too, right, because some of these, true. some of these people get paid almost more than a hundred dollars an hour, like the cough cough, the executive from Warner Brothers. Oh, probably even more yeah. than that. All right, is just those billions and trillions of dollars you made in the last several years just not good enough for you? Okay, that's a fair enough point. Now you are right. There are definitely some writers and actors and directors. That do earn a lot, all right? That are definitely like the top 5% of income earning in the world of Hollywood, all right? But they make a small percentage of the industry, all right? And the majority of people who are part of this Writers Guild union are low earners who have grunt work salaries, who many of them are probably in the poverty line because, you know, the industry is their passion. They, they're aspiring actors. They're trying to get into business. Some of them work, you know, they bust tables or they have only fans to pay the bills until they make it big as an actor, which most likely will never happen. But again, it's not just the writers and actors being affected. It's the prop makers, the costume makers, the, you know, the switchers, the people who do the it's lighting, a- the crafting, it's the everybody. editors, it's the post production. Shut up, Tony. The editors, the post-production, <laughs> the local businesses that rely on production companies to buy their goods and services as they're working, caterers, drivers, travel people. It's a lot of people in this union that do a lot of grunt work that are getting affected by this strike. So even though there's you know maybe 10,000 strikers that are causing this, there's probably hundreds of thousands of people that are not even necessarily part of the strike But they're forced to be part of the strike because they're forced to be out of work. And that, for as long as the strike has been going, that's pretty shitty. Wouldn't you guys think? Yeah. Very. I I didn't even, like, know about the other people that that you mentioned, the production designers, costume designers. Like, I wasn't even aware of that. They never even mentioned it in the articles. No, of course they don't. They just want to mention, you know, the top tier or whatever. All right. So, and again, what brought this strike on was, you know, relatively poor compensation for writers via residuals with the advent of streaming. So they, you know, they've noticed their their paychecks have gotten a little bit down because they're not getting as much royalties and residuals, all right, with the way movies and shows are now being distributed uh, and published, all right? So I can understand, like, you know, hey, wait a minute, we worked on this, we want to get paid accordingly, so what they want is better compensation and job security for writers. Would you guys agree that if you are successful, you deserve to be paid, right? Yeah. Yes. So then the next part of what they want is they want to increase the size of writers' rooms and mandate the minimum number of writers being hired. 
So do you uh, think, gentlemen, exactly, do you think, gentlemen, that every show and artist or, or musician needs to have a certain number of people writing a show? The answer yeah. is no, because, you know, some people can do well just writing a show by themselves or just one other person or so. All right. So this one. So, you know, you have Kashmir, you know, oh, let the sun beat down on base and stars filled my dream. And I'm, you know, poetic lyrics. I'm a traveler of both time and space to be where I've been to sit with the elders of, gen of gentle race. All right. All right. And then here's the song by Rihanna. And it is cake, 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 cake. All right. Led Zeppelin, I think the song. All right. The lyrics are by one person. You had this song by Rihanna written by four people. Like, do we really need <laughs> ten, ten fucking writers to write really simplified shit like that? Not really. <laughs> Not really. It's like one, it, 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 one person could write much better lyrics than, than four to ten people and stuff. Exactly. God the other thing is they want to limit the use of artificial intelligence in the writing process. So would you guys agree that, yeah, we really shouldn't be using chat GPT to write a show? No. Nope. No. Nope. I mean, it depends because it could work. Sure, I've done it a couple of times, but it's not perfect. It still needs human contact. Exactly. So... You, I agree that they really should mandate and limit the use of artificial intelligence. They can use it as a tool to help or for maybe for research purposes, but not to write a damn show or write a screenplay, especially that. All right. So we agree that, you know, the AI should be limited. We agree that if you're successful, you should be compensated. We agree that, you know, the people that, you know, have their work published should get better residuals and royalties and studios should be more transparent with the numbers behind how well they're doing, all right? But we obviously don't agree that you don't need to mandate a certain number of people to be in the writer's room. We agree, folks, that, you know what? Just hire the people who are talented. Like, imagine being somebody who absolutely hates Batman and you detest Batman, but because they have to hire a certain number of people, that includes people who don't like Batman, being hired to write a Batman movie. That doesn't uh, sound right, does it? It might actually be the only thing that DC ever made that I actually care about. <laughs> right. And here's another reason why I don't agree with the mandate of the writer's room. It's too expensive to hire all of them. Oh, like, yeah. Good, good God. Like, for what they are asking, for what they are demanding... That is way too much money that's being offered on the table and forcing studios to pay this much for shitty writing, that's way too expensive. Oh, yeah. I'm right. just, like, wondering if, like, this strike is going to have a huge effect on all the crappy woke projects, like, if they're going to all get canceled. Oh, yeah. yep. It, it already is. is because the late night talk shows have been off. So because of these, you know, because late night talk shows are written on an extremely tight schedule in order to stay topical, because, you know, late night talk shows can't be, you know, they can't make future episodes because then the then the topics are irrelevant. So, you know, Stephen Colbert, Seth Meyers, John Oliver, and the two Jimmies are all doing a podcast together called Strike Force 5. And without the writers, they're just proving that, oh, they're actually not as funny as people think they are. Unfortunately, like we, it's not, it hasn't been that long since you had Stephen Colbert and Jimmy Kimmel basically pushing, you know, the pushing the vaccine on people. You've had skits and fucking dance numbers about the vaccine and trying to get people, you know, to take Moderna, take Pfizer, fucking people. All right. Now, you had a lot of actors, they're not allowed to promote anything they've recently done because of union rules. They're not allowed to talk or promote about anything that has been affected by the strike. Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, imagine you're going to a convention circuit. Like, you're, a, you know, people have paid money to come see you or to come, you know, get your autograph or get a picture. And you're not allowed to talk about the show to these people that have paid to see you. It's kind of curious as to how, like, 
the one guy I'm subscribed to, Warren Thompson from the Cosmic Wonder, can like even still talk about Marvel projects, even though these actors and writers are not allowed to like talk about their movies and shows. So this guy yeah. you're talking about, is he actually involved with Marvel projects or no? I mean, he has connections, but I wouldn't say he's like a part of Marvel. That's why. If he's part of the Marvel projects, then obviously he can't talk about it. But that's our that's our point. All right. So you've had people like Drew Marymore especially try to, you know, basically they tried to resume production without the WGA writers. Because Barrymore was basically saying, hey, look, there's a lot more people who need this show to keep going so they can continue to survive. She's basically like, look, there's more people than just the WA GA writers. But once she got harassed enough, all right, and because she was being picketed by guild members, she reversed her decision to pander. And again, this is the same person in this world who, you know, they all loved her when she kneeled with Dylan Mulvaney, but now she's a scab for trying to work around the strike and get people back to work. So now she's a bad person, apparently. I imagine it's because she knows deep down that she's going to get, like, kicked out of the WGA. Possibly. And that same thing happened with Bill Maher. He announced that he would continue his show because, you know, he said there's too many below the line people that are suffering. But then he reversed his decision five days later because all these people kept calling him a scab. You know, there's a lot of people that are about to lose their houses and their livelihoods because of the strike not going anywhere. And when people are trying to get people back to work, they're the bad guys? What the fuck? Makes no sense. Um, it's a pretty fucked up thing to do. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And let's also mention I mean, that The View is a show that has kept production going and nobody has called out The View. Double standards? I hate The View. Seriously? Seriously? Yeah, how come The View gets to keep going, but Drew Barrymore and Bill Maher are not? It's okay when they do it, but not others? Even though they're trying to do the same thing? Maybe, uh, maybe Whoopi Goldberg, like, put clauses in her contract that keeps the WGA from interfering with their show? I don't know, or she might have pictures of somebody doing it donkey style and, they're do and blackmailing people to keep their show going. God. I mean, it's possible. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but here's the thing, all right? So, since the strike has gone on, all right, they have, you know, the st you're saying that the studios are at fault here, but the studios have actually started to cave in a little bit. And this WGA Guild is basically, they have been offered almost 90% of everything that they want. And the one thing that they're not getting is the mandated writer's room. But because they're not getting everything that they want, because they're not getting the writer's room, they're, they continue to refuse to negotiate or keep going. I mean, for how long? How much do you think that these writers are being offered per week? Lots of money, I don't know. Lots what and lots is your of money. guess? Give me a number. 43 an hour? <laughs> One million. Okay, forty-three an hour. Okay, five, one million. Five million. Okay, how much do you think a week? Let's put it that way. Twenty. Twenty uh, billion. Oh, good God! <laughs> oh my God, Tony, you're too much. Twenty dollars a week. That'd be good if this was eighteen sixty-five, but definitely not now. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at math, so it's okay. I wasn't asking. You um, All right. Here's what they're being offered. eleven to $14,000 a week. And the WGA people are saying no to that. Oh. They're, that they're so saying stupid. that's not enough. Yes. Gee. Now I get our How can they Bob say no? Exactly. How could they say no to that? Okay, do you know how much? Okay, let's say you get $10,000 a week. That's $480,000 a year. That's a six-figure salary, and they're saying that's not enough? Oh, poor us, we WGA writers. We just want a living wage, but $400,000 a year is just not enough for us. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. It's like, how much more money do you expect? Like, what are you trying to do, bankrupt Hollywood? It's, no, that's <laughs> probably what they want to do. That's probably what they want to do. I and doubt I was that. Say, no. 
Now I can understand what Bob Iger meant by they have uh, too much high of uh, expectation. So, and again, they the WGA refused to back down. They are they're turning down eleven to fourteen thousand dollars a week just because they're not getting the writers room because they all want these shows to have a certain number of hirees. Why? Because they can continue working even as this industry is in decline, which is completely hmm. you know it's fairy tale land for this point. Yeah, it's like now, at first, I thought I could side with the writers and actors, and now it's like I don't even know who to side with at this point. I think both sides are just equally bad. And that is a fair thing to say, you know? So these idiots are wanting more money and more people getting all these raises. They fail to understand basic economics, that the studios can't afford the mandate for 20 writers in the room. There's only enough room for so many people. Are you that surprised about it, dude? No, of course I'm not surprised. How do they uh. seri okay? How do they seriously expect studios to pay 20 writers at 11 to 14 dollars a week for shows that don't make any money? Because I, nobody I, I watches I them. Because the shows suck. How do they expect that? You got me, dude. Same here. I didn't even like She-Hulk because of how woke it was. Exactly. You need 20 people to write that shit? You need 20 writers to pay she to write She-Hulk twerking? You need 20 writers for that shit? Modern Hollywood has finest. Exactly. Well, uh, they, well he did have uh, four songwriters to write the song WAP that, were, that were, was written by four men. Uh-huh. How many songwriters wrote WAP? Four. What Tony wishes he could do with his girlfriend. man. Oh my god. I always thought I thought you were gonna say Tony wrote that song. Yeah. Tony wishes. Tony wishes that he could get all that money. All right. So the industry the industry is suffering from less people going to movies and paying to see them. We've already established that. They're not really doing much to get people to go back to the movies. So what do you think they're going to do? They're going to charge more for admissions fees to solve this issue so that the WGA, WGA writers get paid what they want? <laughs> Don't think that's how that works. Yeah, that's bullshit. I mean, hopefully not because I'm a Regal Unlimited member. Also, uh, if I can play this out, uh, did most of the writers, I, I don't know, were on Amber Heard's side when... Uh, Johnny going on trial. Exactly. Most of these idiots, most of these studios that threw Johnny Depp under the bus, all right, are now having to are now having to try to cave into these entitled pricks. Like it's it's the oh, it's yeah. the rich elites eating the rich elites elites is what this is happening. All right, and now and unfortunately, all right, all of these people who are being forced to strike and suffer because they're part of the union are not getting paid nearly what these WG writers are being offered. And I'd imagine a lot of them right now are probably thinking, fuck this, I want to get out of the union. I mean, if I was a below-the-line worker in the industry and saw how much money being tossed around to be offered to the big-name actors, writers, and directors being turned down, I would definitely be thinking, what the fuck are you people doing? You people make more than a week than most people do in a month, and you're saying that's not a living wage? This is more money than what most Americans get in a week, and you assholes are turning that down? I'm just like, my eyes, I'm rolling my eyes right now, like thinking, what the fuck? <laughs> exactly. If this doesn't exactly. indicate how self-absorbed the elites are in this industry, I don't know what is. And, oh no, it's because we're trying to get more people hired. You don't need that many writers to make a good show. In the end, you're just wasting money on people that don't need to be there. I'm kind of just, like, wondering if, like, in the end, if they're going to have to, like, fire a lot of these writers and actors and editors for all the crap they're responsible for pulling off in the strike. I'm sure we'll, I'm sure there will be some kind of solution there, which we can get to. And, I mean, aside from a select few, it's not like they're all making good shows. Almost like there's just, you know, the phrase, there's too many cooks in the kitchen. All right. Now we oh, agree. Yeah. If your show if your show is successful, yeah, you should get paid for it. Get raises. But if your show sucks because you have 20 people in the writers room with a pen in one hand and a penis in the other just sitting there making everything about politics and other agendas, 
or just not coming up with any creative ideas and nobody watches them because they're tired of the same old shit, tired of shows that are not entertaining and boring as fuck. Oh, but they deserve to be paid more bullshit. Yeah, bullshit. Shit. Tell everyone here exactly what it is. Bullshit. And here they keep wanting to mandate one thing so they can keep working when there is not enough room for all of them. All because of that, they're holding everyone else in the industry hostage. And if, and again, if there was another strike that was keeping these writers out of the work, these writers would be saying, oh, please, just agree to the negotiations so I can start buying groceries again, or I don't have to lose my house. But now that they're the ones causing the strike, then it's all about what they want, regardless of how many other people it's affecting. Are you that surprised once again, Anthony? No, I'm not surprised at all. This is why the common folk is turning on the Hollywood elite and and that they've been doing so for decades. Now, let's talk, let's go down to earth a little bit since we're obviously we're not rich elites, okay? Are you have you gentlemen ever been part of a union? Yes or no? No. Nope. Nope. No. Okay. I at my work in LA, I am not part of a union, okay? But there is a section of employees in my building that is. And, you know, I've seen that, you know, these people get benefits and raises because of, you know, what union talks have done, all right, to, you know, higher ups, okay? But then I've also seen the downside of this union when they choose to go on strike and boycott and just not show up to work over things like working conditions that they wanted. But again, they didn't enter in any negotiation talks before they chose a strike. They just decided to get up and not come to work, all right? And meanwhile, so this building gets shut down and people who aren't even in the union had their shifts canceled. Hmm. So yes, I have seen firsthand how selfish union reps can be when they clearly are only thinking about themselves and what their inner circles are thinking and not about the other employees' livelihoods that they're affecting. So this strike has gone on since May. All right, Supposedly, as of this recording, they're going to try more negotiation to end the strike, but only time will tell. All right, Would you guys agree, gentlemen, is Hollywood a dying industry? Oh, yeah, yeah yep. definitely. Especially because they can't think of any other original deals if they had to remake everything. Yeah, it's a dying. It is dying. Yeah, you need and 20 writers think. to remake shit? Exactly. I'd rather be independent with my creative work rather than uh, liberal assholes telling me what to do. Uh, I was just going to say, Hollywood it's, has been on, the, on a decline, but it's not what like other people say, how it's not a real job. Only big tech and nursing. That's the real thing. That's right. I really no, despise people that say that. They're all it's, real jobs. If you're getting paid and you're successful, it is a real job. It requires it, your time. It requires your energy. You know, but it is a job. Some people in my town keep saying that. It's, like, if I, it's not a nurse or a big tech, like a software engineer. It's not real. It's actually funny that I was like, after I graduated high school and I started in college, I wanted to major in acting. But then my parents told me that like, um, if, unless you make it big, you won't get paid at all. My father... Um, if he was, if he didn't end up in the corporate world before he retired, he probably could have done acting because he acted in high school plays and he acted in uh, college plays and whatever. But his father, my opa, was definitely the same, the type of person, oh, no, that's not a real job. He also told my uncle, who would have been scouted by the Minnesota Twins, oh, no, you can't make a good living playing professional baseball. So, yes, people's lives have been destroyed by that mindset. I can understand that. I even, like, wanted to do, like, acting and be a cartoonist like Seth MacFarlane and Matt Groening, but now knowing that Hollywood is going down the toilet, now I kind of had second thoughts about that. If I wasn't involved in hockey, all right, and playing the, that sport as much as I did when I was younger, I probably would have joined theater like my sister did, all right, because I can be expressive. And, you know, because I, what I do at work, I basically have to put on a performance to, to these people. There is a little bit of actors and aspiring Hollywood dreams in all of us. But, okay, now here, unfortunately, okay, as Hollywood is in this valley that keeps digging themselves further in the hole, here's what I think, is what's going to happen in the end is if shit like this keeps continuing, where, where these unions keep getting what they want, they'll eventually bleed the studios dry and shut down the studios because nobody's paying to watch their shitty shows. And the studios yeah. aren't making any money. Yeah. Hell, there's already a bunch of new shit on streaming platforms that nobody watches because people would rather watch refunds of Seinfeld. 
agree. I, I agree. Cause you know what? I'd rather watch reruns of Rescue 911 over, over the crap they have out on whatever streaming service right now. I'd rather watch like reruns of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic over the crap they got. So, you know, I'm sure if they mandated to have tw 10 to 20 writers that get guaranteed six-figure yearly salaries, then the studios will have to be more selective on what projects will generate enough money to make back for the studios, all right, and keep the business afloat. Because after all, this is a business, all right? Yeah, you can, you know, you can criticize or admire the glamour that some of these big-name stars get, but it is a business. And in the end... I think less shows will get produced and less people who are in these unions will get hired. So that's going to lead to kind of a recession in Hollywood where all of these aspiring actors and whatever are going to have to find something else to do. Like a lot of people already are doing because that's what it's like in almost any industry. If you don't make it in that industry, you got to find something else to do. And the other thing <laughs> is, I think movie studios will start relying more on independent and non-union work. They'll just say, well, fuck you, union people. Let's just do this studio that isn't unionized, because then we can actually get something out of it. Streaming service revenues are down. People are not going to see the movies as often as they used to, even for well-established IPs. I mean, Indiana Jones was a box office bomb, the last one. So it's only a matter of time before a ton of aspiring actors, writers, directors, and artists are out of a job because of the selfish actions of a select few. And it's not just them, it's also the other types of jobs that i also mentioned like imagine if you're a donut shop that relies on this movie production to buy your donuts every day to keep you in float well all of a sudden that production company is not happening oh no you lost your customer base and now your business can't stay afloat it affects everybody all right it it's it's not just affecting the rich it affects everybody down to mm -hmm. the below the line people we have sympathy for the people that are below the line that want nothing to do with the strike, that just want to get back to work. But we have absolutely no sympathy for these writers that are just throwing hissy fits and acting like four-year-olds over not getting what they want. Once again, that's that that that's modern society for you. Okay, I was just going to say, it's kind of like what Mr. Miyagi said, there's no such thing as bad students, only bad teachers. And I think it can easily be applied to the writers as parents that brought them up that way. I mean, if, if something changes, then it changes. But if it doesn't, then it doesn't. We have no control over that. Well, that is all we can say at this point, guys. So thank you so much for this discussion on the ongoing writer strike. Maybe it's going to be over tomorrow. Maybe it's going to continue on to the new year. Only time will tell. But that is all we're going to say today, folks. The diner is closed. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. I'm Desert Coyote 22. Thank you for listening.